The GT Aggressor 2021 model is our top choice if you're looking to buy a mountain bike under $500. This model is a 20-inch, meaning the wheels are 29-inch high, opposed to the standard 27.5-inch of most mountain bikes. A 20-inch can give you more speed and better overall traction. The GT Aggressor comes in three models, GT Aggressor Comp, Basic Model, GT Aggressor Sport which has disc brakes and the GT Aggressor Expert, Pro which has hydraulic disc brakes. GT Aggressor main features. GT have been building bikes since 1972, where they develop BMX frames, so they know a thing or two about frames. The frame is the most important bit of any model. The brakes can be changed out, as can the gears, tires, and seats. But if the frame gets busted, that is the end of it. The frame, in this case, is modeled after Triple Triangle Tech. It makes it stronger and a lot more durable as well. This is just one of the things that make this model so appealing. This kind of frame is not only tougher but also more responsive over rough spots because the components in the rear are stiffer. It is a design that has been proving its value over the last two decades. It has become more of a trademark perhaps and is a very simplistic design. You do get straight tubes that have a little flare. In addition to plate dropouts and a large gusset that sits just underneath the down tube. This is reminiscent of the Zasker model in the 90s. The head tube is ring reinforced and contains a headset that is entirely conventional. The placement of the cable is based on the shortest route possible. The rear gear and brake cable sit just beneath the top tube, and the cable for the front gear sits underneath the down tube. On the frame itself, there are two bottle bosses. GT Aggressor Wheels We do have to mention that the wheels are a little more lightweight than normal. This is because of the reduced number of spokes, four less than is standard. The company says it is to reduce the weight but it does not make a huge difference. So it is probably more about saving costs, it is not a huge deal, though, and the wheel rims do still feel solid and well supported. The Kinder tires are a nice addition here. With a blend of knobs and blocks, they will allow you to tear down hills and get a decent grip. It should be noted, though, that these are not full grip tires. Take care when going around a corner or when cycling through the mud. They may not grip well enough for the real muddy patches. GT Aggressor The other bits and pieces. The handlebar is well made and is nice and wide. It allows you to grip on tightly without risking cramping your hands. The seat post is a bit on the skinny side, but this is a good thing because it gives the rear of the bike a bit more give. The seat can be micro-adjusted to get the perfect level of comfort for yourself. That said, you cannot expect as smooth a ride as you would get from a much more expensive bike. The transmission consists of your normal EZ fire shifters and there are two lower and Shimano matches. The touring unit at the back works on a pulley system that is designed to make shifting lighter and easier. We will leave it up to you to decide how much of a difference this does make but there is no question that it helps to tidy the cable quite a lot. The Mega Range cassette, in our opinion, is not great but this is not a deal breaker. A beginner in the field might actually appreciate the bottom gear that it provides. The big nibble that we have here is that the frame has no mounts to allow you to upgrade your brakes to disc brakes. The front suspension provided by the SR Sunter fork is made out of steel and not damped at all. How comfortable is the GT Aggressor to ride? This is aimed at beginners rather than experienced riders. So, basically, people who are going to be attempted easier trails and perhaps not spending as much time in the sea. Overview, this is a good offering. You get a lot of features for the money that you pay, and it is going to last you well. It is, however, better suited for you if you're a casual hobbyist that is not looking at getting into competitions or more technical trails. This is not the option to choose if you want to go tearing down the side of the mountain because the ride would be really uncomfortable, and the brakes might be a little iffy on corners. It can do double duty as a commuter bike as well, and that is a big plus. But this is really better suited to beginners. It looks cool, but there are limited opportunities to upgrade it, and this will frustrate someone wanting the best out of their bikes. We are going to end this video right away. If you have any query or information to share, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.